Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. My name is Barry Selby. I'll get to that in a second. Today's episode is number 504. 504, wow. And the topic today is, well, continuation is the masculinization of women, part five. Yes, part five. Stop competing. And I'll explain that and break that down pretty quickly. Before I do that, let me introduce myself again, starting with my name, which is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. This is the name on my, on my video, if you're watching on Facebook Live, where it starts initially, or on YouTube later on, or even on my podcast. So fill in the blanks. <laughs> I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women attract, create, and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last couple of years, I'm just going to round it up right now, I have done these Facebook Lives um, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is actually a continuation, it seems, because I started on Sunday at my 500th ta-da broadcast um, with the masculinization of women as a theme, and it's sort of grown from there, probably because it's my core message. And today's um, subset... I'm looking for words to fit in, or um, selected item within that conversation is, ladies, stop competing. In the last four broadcasts before this, I've talked about how women have had to embody and copy how men are just to be able to survive in the business world. So it's not necessarily a thing that was done by choice, but it's become kind of like that now, and how women have found themselves at a crossroads in a way. Crossroads in a way? Something like that. <laughs> crossroads. Something. I'm trying to give that symbology here. Um, in a way, caught between wanting to succeed in business and also have a healthy personal life, be healthy and have healthy relationships. And he's, they're, a count, they're a counterpoint to each other. or um, They're in conflict with each other, I'll put it that way. Part of this is because the paradigm that we've been in for business, for women, has been that their role, their um, way of being in business has been to copy the men. So when we, copy, when we copy the men, they actually act like men. That's the simplest way of putting it. And if you've been in business for a while, especially if you're one who's not in a support role, but in a leadership role, especially if you are in a company, you might find yourself backing against the other men, if nothing else, to protect your sanity and your sexuality. And in fact, some ways to function, you've had to be in your masculine more than your feminine to do so. This is not unusual. In fact, this has been part of the um, entry requirements in some ways to be in the business world. Not a good thing. I'm just saying what is. This is what's happened. I mean, it happened more from the 60s and 70s, but it's moved on from the, on there to now into the teens. We've had a lot of evolution of this, but in some ways we haven't changed. One of the things that's going on is that women have had to copy men in some areas of how to do business and how to be in life. And part of that is to bring on a competitive energy. I'll put it that way. We men, as masculine men especially, it's our, in our very beingness to compete. We're always after the same goal, we're achieving, we're, we're, we're singular focus, we want to get where we want to go, and that the price has been often to lose friends because of it. When women do this, it's a lot more painful. Partly because the feminine nature, the, the, the um, part of the quality of feminine energy is inclusivity. In fact, part of the feminine energy is to bring things together. It's a collaborative energy, which women have a gift with more than men do, although some men are pretty good at it too. I think it's one of my skills, maybe, developing. So when you are competing, you're going against your natural resonance. You're going against your natural beingness. And the price you're paying is a detriment to your own health and your own vitality and your own femininity. I talked yesterday about, um, well, I did do a sidebar yesterday about women's health a lot of women have been getting adrenal burnout and having these challenges in their own lives because they've been embodying the masculine mindset for doing things and haven't gone back to being how to be feminine. And it's a missing piece. And so one of the telltale signs is being competitive. I've got a piece showing up we're going to talk about in a second about cheating. So hold on for that one. It hit me at the beginning of the broadcast. I want to save it until it fits the right place. So having this competitive energy requires that there's a separation from each other which is what men do. So we don't, we, men are not, men only collaborate to get leverage. They don't collaborate as brothers necessarily, which is something's missing for the male point of view as well. But for women, as sisters, your power is in your, is in your sisterhood, in your connection, your collaboration. There are some 
some women, some friends of mine, women leadership teachers, friends of mine, who are powerful, inspirational teachers of women how to be in collaboration, how the feminine authority, the feminine power, the feminine majesty is bringing that um, collaboration together. And, and it's not about women being exclusive with other women in the sense of being collaboration, it's that women bring everybody together. It's an energetic that works really well. And one of the problems that women have faced is that they haven't found a way to get back to that because they've been trained by the male culture of business that that doesn't work. That's something that, that, because in the business world, to be honest, collaboration and cooperation oftentimes is frowned upon. It's looked upon as being bad. So when women do that, they are judged by the other men and most women don't want to deal with that. They'd rather fit in with the structure that's already there and have this challenge to, to move forward. And that, unfortunately, is one of the things that causes women's health to decline. Now, I talked about the yesterday, and that was part four. So the stop competing piece I want to speak to directly and primarily is, <laughs> simple terms, don't copy the men. When you're copying the men in the way that they act, you're starting to do things that are very masculine, energetically based, and it doesn't serve you ultimately. It can serve in a, to a degree, but not ultimately. And the problem is, as I mentioned yesterday or the day before, when you go home from work, you don't turn it off. Or you may not have forgotten how to, or you may have even forgotten you're doing it because you're so ingrained in it. And the, for me, the, the powerful position in this is that when you do reclaim, reconnect to, and re-embody yourself in your feminine, you can erase all of that um, crap you've been carrying. You can shed it, basically, and be more whole and more complete. And something came up about cheating, and we'll get back to that one. So, let me find a way to get to there in a way that's effective. So, carrying that competitive energy home from work versus being in collaboration and harmony is detrimental to you, and it's also detrimental in your dating life too. Because when women compete for the men, first of all, you're doing the job for them, which sucks, really. Not for, for you, not for us. That, I mean, we just put our feet up and be lazy about it, which is not what, not what we should be doing anyway. We should be the ones pursuing. When you're in your masculine, you do the pursuing. It takes our role away from us, which either one, makes it easier for us, and two, for some of us, makes us lazier. I've been there. And when you become more feminine and you pull yourself back into receiving mode, it puts us on guard and on point to do our role, which is to pursue and court and seek you out. The cheating piece. Because of that, uh, and, uh, okay, this is what's coming through. So it could be totally inaccurate, but this is what's coming through. I believe a lot of the cheating piece or the cheating that happens in relationships, when women cheat on men, one part of it, so I'm, I'm just sawing through in my head as it drops in. Part of it is that there is definitely a challenge for women not being satisfied in a relationship. That's a whole other conversation, which I'm not going to get into here. I don't think I am. But the second piece is that some women go out to cheat, to, they cheat, they, oh, here's the piece. When women steal other women's men, that cheating, that's the masculine energy running the show. When women are their feminine, they don't do that. Let's be clear. And that for me, I'm very clear about. I'm just double checking I am. Yeah, I think I am, yes. So when women are in their feminine, there isn't a desire to steal another woman's man. That's a masculine energy, because men do that to other men. They want to steal this woman. I'm sorry, I'm adding a bunch of guys, but guys do that. There's a competi competition to get the target, to get the goal. And the reality is it's not about keeping it, it's about achieving it, which is why this sucks when it happens. So if a, if a woman or a man in their masculine steals the partner of somebody of the same gender, they've got their victory of, of cheating by getting them away from them, but they won't keep it. And what they've done is destroy the relationship. So I'm not a big fan of cheating anyway. But the, the, when, a, when a woman or a man leaves a relationship for something else, that's different. I'm talking about the one who steals from, becomes the other woman sort of thing that seduces the man So in, in a way. That actually is a very masculine thing to do because it's leading, it's directing, it's pursuing. And ladies, you're not doing your feminine, you're not owning your feminine power when you do that. So what to do? Um, some solution ideas I'm just thinking on the, on the cheating side alone there's a few ideas that come forward 
One of those is that if a woman steals your man, ladies, um, stealing him back won't work. He's already been, um, what's the word looking for? Not, uh, not um, what's the word? Ah. He's already been stained, as it were. <laughs> There's another word coming up, it wasn't showing up. And that's the dysfunctional part. So if that happens, your best job is to move on. Because if you have to work into your masculine to keep him, you're doing it wrong. And he's not the right partner for you. Because a man who's in his masculine does not, um, I can, say, uh, can I say that? I believe a man in his masculine doesn't succumb to that, truthfully. That a man who's in his masculine is in his relationship because he's, he's clear about it, he's staying there. And if another woman shows up to steal him away, he won't do that unless he's free to do so. I don't. I may be off here, so I'm just gonna. I'm just feeling into this one because I feel like if, if a man's in his macho, he doesn't give a flying whatever. You're like, oh, two women, great. I'll play with each both of them, and some men do that, but that's not a masculine way of being. No, it's true. Right? Okay. I'm just being, I'm just, just sitting with it, and seeing if it's true. It is true. When a man's in his masculine, he doesn't do that. A man who cheats is a man who's in his in his ego, and it's about ego gratification. It's about winning. It's about cheating. It's about being better than somebody else. It's about proving a point. And that's a mas that's not a masculine trait. That's a macho, um, ego-driven side of being, in a way of being. So back to the side of the women. When you're a feminine, when you find yourself in a masculine with a masculine man, and there are more showing up, so I have faith. Um, you have loyalty, and you also have synergy and intimacy that is bonded, and is not influenced by outside experiences. However, or a requirement for that is you must be in your feminine and you must choose a masculine partner. If you're, if that's your, let me, sorry, let me frame that. If you're naturally in your feminine, that's your natural state, but you've been out of it for a long time, coming back to your feminine is how you're going to be more aligned to your truth, where you can be more vulnerable, more open, more transparent, and more authentic. That was my lesson for being in the masculine is that I was out of alignment with it for so long, that when I came back to it, it's like coming home. And I'm much more able to stay in my truth, my alignment, my masculine, my, my authenticity, and my transparency by being in my masculine than when I'm not. And so, ladies, when you're in a feminine, I believe the same thing is true for you. There's an alignment for that place. And when you're in that place, there is no competition. Because the second part of this, which I did mention earlier, is that when you are in your feminine, you start realizing something else is that you're unique. The truth is, everybody is. But when we forget that, we think we have to compete to win. When we're unique, we know we are, there's nobody competing with, us, competing with us. We are authentic, we are whole, we are the best of us we can be. And that's the only thing we have to compete against, is our old self. So if you want to compete, as I just said, then compete against the, the you you were a year ago, or, or a day ago, or a week ago. And that's true for everybody, men and women. But do it from the place of becoming more embodied in the truth of who you are. I'm not talking about the money you make or the goals you set or the achievement. That's that's great. But the truth is, the more success you can have is the more whole you can become. The more real you become, the more authentic you can become. The more grounded in your truth, living in your beingness and being authentic. Focus on those and your life will transform. And with that, there's no cheating required. And no competing required either. So I've got cheating and competing switched to myself. So to finish back up to the beginning, competition is really, um, unless it's something like it's play and fun, like going, you know, if you're going for bicycle races, stuff like that, that's, that's one thing. But when you're competing in life, vocational stuff, that's not healthy because truth is there is no competition there. And if you make that a competition, you both lose. So I think I've given you like seven different points in this. So I hope this made sense to you. The truth for me is that if the more we live authentically, the more we live in our vulnerability and our truth, the more everybody's going to win. So let's put that on the table, shall we? Um, with that, I think I'm done. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I've said at the beginning, and it goes on Facebook Live first, then onto my YouTube channel, then onto my podcast. So let me give you those links. You can find me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, please make sure you, you there's a notification, notification somewhere on this screen, I believe, that lets you not, be notified next time I go live, which is usually 5 p.m. Pacific time on uh, Facebook Live. So you can watch my replays on my business page on Facebook and my YouTube channel and my podcast, which are facebook.com forward slash author is my business page. You can subscribe to my, I mean, you can like my page and follow me there. Um, on my YouTube channel, it's Barry Selby is my 
username and my channel and you can subscribe to my channel and also get the playlist which is message for the masculine to watch them there and finally you can watch me listen to my podcast audio only so if you're driving riding around doing some other things we want to listen but you can't focus your eyes on it my podcast is a great way to do that and that's messages from the masculine on itunes and subscribe and download them there um, if you're stuck in this and you've got some challenges on how to get back to your feminine, first of all, watch my four previous broadcasts because these, these five are a series that just, they became a series. And with that, I hope that you got some value from it. If you want some direct help, please reach out to me, message me over social media. Um, on my website, there's a contact form. There's also a chat request, which is a, China, a chance to sign up for a discovery session. I recommend you check that out if you are looking for some support. Um, and that, I think, is about it. That's the one for today. Tomorrow may be part six. We'll see. The, the part five wasn't planned, but again, these all these are becoming parts of a series because that's what's coming up. Um, I invite you to care yourself and take these questions to heart that I asked earlier. Those thoughts that I provoked in you, I hope I pro provoked. I thought for you to ponder and consider and see what lines up for you. Stay tuned to yourself. Stay tuned to your heart, and listen inside, because the more you listen to that truth inside, the more the world will shift to align to it. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you again tomorrow as it'll be Friday broadcast it will be but there'll be another one 5pm Pacific time thanks for being with me as always I'll see you again tomorrow take care bye